My obsession with Layer 1s continue today with another promising one called Luxo. In the next 15 minutes, you're going to learn everything important about Luxo, including the team, LSPs, the white paper, token, and of course, the community. I'm not telling you to subscribe, like, or comment, or use my Bybit the referral link, simply because you hear it everywhere, all the time, so let's just go to the review right away. What is Luxo? Luxo is a third generation layer one blockchain focused on digital identity, art, gaming, social media, design, and fashion. Luxo was founded by Fabian Fogersteller. He is a father of ERC20 standard, Web3.js libraries, reversible ICOs, Ethereum wallet, and much more. Once the mainnet of Luxo is live, it will use Casper proof of stake consensus. Luxo introduced 12 LSPs that are Luxo standard proposals. We'll go through them later. Finally, it is EVM Ethereum virtual machine based and thus fully compatible with all Ethereum smart contracts. Now let's have a look at the team. Even though Fabian is the main name behind Luxo, he co-founded the project with his wife, Marjorie Hernandez. Neither of them is CEO. Luxo actually doesn't have a CEO. Marjorie is a talented designer and architect who has had experience in branding, art, and even blockchain before she co-founded Luxo. The IOTA Foundation became one of my clients at Ernst & Young. She has several intriguing opinions. You know, but a lot of people might think that. A lot of people think, hey, we're going to have iPhones forever. The answer is no, you won't have an iPhone forever. Yeah. She's likable. There's a lot of bars in Berlin you could pay with Bitcoin in 2013. And, you know, we dropped more than one Bitcoin in bars, which was in hindsight not the best decision. <laughs> <laughs> and seems to manage the branding fashion part of Luxo project. Fabian is the name in Luxo. Arguably, his major impact on blockchain space was creation of ERC20 standard back in his Ethereum days. Essentially, Fabian made ICO craze of 2017 possible. It took me like some about like a, a year or so to even realize that okay, all of this ICO stuff, yeah, that was, you know, came through that. I, I like to actually do things that are that have a big impact. He strikes me as a quiet person standing on the sidelines, like this famous Ethereum picture shows. More often than not, it's the more discreet people who get things done, not the vocal ones. So what's holding back blockchain adoption? We're in this space now since like 10 plus years. But do people really use blockchain on a daily basis? And the answer is for trading, right? On the contrary, when Fabian speaks, he's clear and precise. Decentralization is actually a very useful tool because it actually removes you from responsibility. And who wants to have a responsibility? Everybody wants to put it, put it to the edges. Thanks, guys. He is clever too, making jokes and keep the presentation exciting. I thought that was the best talk today. In the history of NFT NYC, I don't think we've ever had an audience say they want more, more, more. If you are looking or thinking to invest into people, Fabian seems like a dark horse. So we basically rethought all of these token standards that we have. Fabian developed LSPs, Luxo Standard Proposals, which is a set of standards that could serve as a blueprint for the future. It's in a way like an, a, a 2.0 version of these standards. Let's talk about them in the detail. So creating a standard is actually really the right basis for like fixing problems rather than like just making an app or just making a custom smart contract and hope that people jump on it. The Luxo standard proposals, LSPs, are the main building block of the ecosystem. They're used by developers to build their dApps and give more flexibility, which can lead to a more engaging user experience. There are the first 10 introduced standards. Let's fly through them. LSP0 is the blockchain-based account itself. The next standard communicates with the account about transactions. That is essential to make a transaction safe and protect you from sending your assets to the wrong address. People lost a bunch of crypto, right? Because they're sending it to the wrong address. 
you should actually not send assets anymore to playing keys. So that's the old world, sending it to playing keys. The new world is sending it to smart contracts. And a smart contract has the universal receiver implemented and does not reject it. We also have libraries, metadata. All of these profiles are ERC-725 accounts contract. And these pictures and name, they are directly fetched from inside the smart contract in a full decentralized way. Fifth standard stores corresponding addresses. We also need a key manager with our account. A key manager that may make different people execute through our universal profile based on different permissions. Seventh standard brings interface for all our assets. LSP8 allows for unique token trading. And lastly, we have the vault. NFT 2.0 is a term used often in Luxo community. I would call it NFT 2.0. So the benefit here is if you, I want to issue a thousand assets of a 7 to 1. 7 to 1 is Ethereum standard for NFTs. I would literally either have a batch functionality or I have to call the mint function a thousand times because I have to create thousand, one thousand different IDs. I also have to update the JSON uh, file for each one. But if I want to create a thousand assets here. 7 to 5 is its upgraded version in Laxo. I simply have to create one function, call the mint function to one specific address and I can create a thousand units, right? Because I'm just creating a number. You can also then add all kinds of new things. You can add a reputation system. You can add a token that's related to those items. <clears throat> There's some other fanciness to it, like the ability to inform other smart contracts when they receive things. This is actually an evolution and a bit more sophisticated version of what 7 to 1 right now is, which is a simple mapping between an ID and an address. Seeing how good we are in flying, Let's fly through white paper next. Luxo believes in overcoming boundaries between physical and digital worlds. Three key principles in Luxo are identification, virtualization and tokenization. Identification stands for giving everyone and everything a unique identity. Transparency and control, it's not a bad thing, right? Like right now, all of these systems are happening without we necessarily knowing what is going on. Virtualization means a transfer of physical products into virtual spaces. And tokenization is conversion of various values, like notion of loyalty or community status. There are cultural currencies which can be bought that can only be earned. For example, reputation tokens where trust has to be earned fairly because they're not given away cheaply. The future of blockchain is social. There's this whole notion of, hey, here, one blockchain to rule them all. And I guess that's probably some people believe Bitcoin is that thing. But actually, each blockchain is more like a country. So culture and community is the main reason why we started Luxo. In the first roughly 35 pages, the white paper thoroughly explains these Trinity principles. The majority of the paper talks about possible use cases. Naturally, we talk about digital collectibles. We have like 100% digital fashion designers. Or even physical collectibles. They are tied to provenance use case, which is immutable record of transparency in simple terms. A Rembrandt painting having universal profile on Luxo will have records of all exhibitions or private collections it attended. Your question might be, how can a physical art have a universal blockchain profile? It's done through uh, attaching RFID chips to physical goods and linking it to blockchain through it. The white paper has even section about these chips. They allow for quote unquote digital ownership. There are many other use cases that are mentioned and even those aren't the final number. Smart intellectual property rights allows us to assign predefined access rights to IP from the get-go without you having have to worry about rights management at a later date. A rental service for your digital or physical items is an intriguing use case. Digital Closet helps you to organize and display your digital items. Gamification allows competitions with tokenized rewards or even activities with those rewards. Or decentralized markets for digital or digital products. Brands are examining new ways to involve their customers in the process and co-creation seems to be the way. 
in another use case on Luxo. The paper further talks about the ecosystem impact, which is essentially disrupting the whole creative industry. Actually, you want to make the blockchain disappear. You want to make it the tool in the background. And that really brings the user adoption. Like we see a new kind of user coming in, and I think it will move very strongly towards NFTs and to non-financial use cases. Sure, there are technical pages about tried and tested factors, such as being 100% EVM interoperable or immutable or secure and resilient. Also, scalability of the network being sufficient given the target sector. Consensus is mentioned. Also, sharding is briefly mentioned, which will be present on Luxo. Although initially Luxo will run on one shard as it provides enough throughput to start with. And lastly, it talks about Lex tokens. We shall talk about them in a separate chapter. The token is Lex, but at the moment there is no mainnet still, so we get Lex E, which is ERC20 version of it. And its use case is very similar to the Ethereum's use case. So it's going to be uh, used for staking, for gas fees and for the voting rights. I always do a little bit of the technical analysis in the reviews. As you can see, I have already drawn three areas on the chart. The two red areas, you guessed it, are the would be the sell areas once the price gets there and the bottom area was my old buy area although although if Luxo was to go lower than my buy area then it would be just short in my opinion it would be just short below two dollars none of this of course is, is investment advice it's just my a technical opinion. Last but not least, very important is to keep an eye on the performance versus Bitcoin and Ethereum and Luxo has been actually one of the very few tokens that have been outperforming Ethereum and uh, Bitcoin and now let's have a look at how strong community Luxo has. Luxo community is active on all their social networks including Telegram, Discord, and of course Reddit. I sincerely thank for all the feedback from the community to my drafted review, I used it all. I even reached out to the founders, asking them for 20 minute Zoom video call, but they didn't get back to me. Although, to be fair, these weeks might be for them more hectic than usual due to Luxo's historic transition to mainnet. Since Luxo is EVM compatible, the mainnet launch is not only going to mean that the native token Lex is gonna come online with validating and staking, but also the DAP building on the network will go online. Moreover, even though I didn't get the questions answered by the founders, the community answered all my questions within a few hours. I came to know, for instance, that many of the Luxus advisors are not listed on their website at the moment as it is undergoing upgrades. Just to mention a few of these advisors, Daniel Hof, the vice president of Nike, Bernd Hauptkorn, the president of Europe for Chanel, or for instance Caroline Drucker, who was the head of strategic partnerships at Instagram, and there are many more impressive advisors. Overall, the community has felt very vibrant and left good impression. Now, before we conclude this review, I'd like to send one critical message. Throughout my review, I have only found one point to criticize. Luxo Project says and believes that the future of blockchain is social. It likely means that the vibrancy and the activity of community matters. But I think it's the founders who should lead as an example for as long as the project is getting done. And as such, I'm surprised to find out that the founders are not engaging with the community on Telegram. So far, all the other projects I have reviewed have had their founders responding to the most engaging questions. Also, their official YouTube channel has released only one video in the span of 12 months. Since I generally like the project, 
I even contacted them through the web forum to offer some clips from this review for their channel. They are yet to respond, but should they want them, I will donate them. Intriguing question is, how can Luxo make it in the post-marriage world? My research suggests that Luxo is likely to target different market from Ethereum. The universal profile market, design and fashion, metaverse and stuff like that. And as such, I don't think Luxo is going to be the competitor to Ethereum. Moreover, it might even be in some ways first mover. So the big question is probably, hey, here you made all of this cool stuff up, blah, blah, blah. And how do, how do people adopt this now? Because everybody's already using MetaMask, right? Actually, uh, a big answer is Luxo. 